Hello, and that's right, Synology IP cameras. That is going to be a thing, apparently, next year. Today, I want to talk about some very, very hot off-the-press news about Synology and their own branded IP cameras. Currently, right now, at the time of recording, it's literally just ended over in Taiwan. There was a big solutions conference over there hosted by Synology, a great event, and images and information, and indeed their own live stream, is now out there for with lots of little bits of information coming out for their intended plans. And one of the earliest and arguably one of the most surprising moves by the brand is their own cameras. Now, these are not those cameras. Hopefully, there are images on screen. But they were very keen to promote them and show them off. But they were keen to also highlight that you're looking at uh, H1 of 2023, so the first half of next year that these are going to arrive. These are the TC500 dome camera, so not dissimilar to this, and the BC500. This is a compact bullet camera, so not so much like this because it's going to be a much smaller form factor version of that. And a lot of the information we've got right now, uh, we've got some very light specifications from their presentation, and at the moment, uh, Eddie, and the, uh, Eddie the web guy in the background is translating a lot of stuff, so there may be a follow-up video to this, either making a few corrections, which I don't think are going to be needed yet, or just adding to it, and there should be an article in the description that we will update. But let's talk about what we know about these cameras, then we're going to talk about why they exist for good and for bad, and the questions we still have. So again, we're talking about both cameras simultaneously because a lot of the specifications, it would appear, is near enough identical across the two. Although obviously the dome camera will have either an element of pan tilt zoom or at the very least a manual area of control there. So um, straight away, it's a five megapixel camera, resolution 2880 times 1620 maximum there at 30 frames per second uh, with a 110 degree viewing angle there. Obviously, there's going to be things like night vision, but we're still waiting to hear about support of things like PIR uh, or kind of uh, different classifications of what you can do within the camera system there. They are both PoE power over Ethernet, which means you're either going to be able to use the camera directly from a PoE switch or you're going to be able to use the camera with a PoE power splitter there. Um, and there is mention of integrated hardware with these cameras now obviously most cameras have got integrated hardware but what i will say if you've not been keeping your finger on the pulse of ip cameras the last couple of years you'll know that thanks to great developments in ai and particularly ai processors with things like mpu neuroprocessing unit and more they're able to get much more refined and efficient ai processors into cameras with a lot more cameras arriving on the scene with ai supported facial recognition person recognition vehicle pet uh, intelligent decision making making across boundaries and more integrated into the cameras themselves and these synology uh, 500 series the bt bt the BC and TC series, you can tell I've had a lot of coffee and have been awake for a while, um, these have got integrated hardware, which to me, and again, big old TBC here, suggest that these cameras will have uh, internal AI services taking the load away from the NAS having to do the work. Now, by that, what I mean is, at the moment, if you do want to use Synology cameras with AI services, you have to go to the AI NASes, the DVA3, um, I believe 221 currently, and uh, the DVA1622 series devices that have got either a GPU on board or are able to take a, uh, advantage of AI-supported integrated graphic services like the Intel Celeron inside the DVA1622. So more than likely, the Synology Surveillance Station software is going to be able to tap into the hardware on these cameras and get the AI supported services to work from the camera side, not the NAS. Now that might be one of the ways in which Synology will appropriate uh, the use of these cameras in their platform, but I'll get onto that later on. Um, moving forward, uh, they have measured it at 180 days of storage, but again, until maybe when Eddie goes through the translations there, we, it's still yet to be confirmed at the time of making this video what the settings would be, whether that is 180 days based on that maximum 5 megapixel 2880 by 1620 30 frames recording, or is that reducing the services somewhat there? Um, also, there's no mention of an SD card from what I could see. If there is an SD card slot there in the cameras, why do I bring that up? Well, predominantly because when it comes to SD card slots in 
an IP cameras used by surveillance station, you can take advantage of something called edge recording. And that is when the system takes advantage of the SD card in the camera as well as sending recordings to surveillance station on the NAS. And of course, then you've got C2 um, surveillance as well. But that means if the camera gets nicked, there are multiple means of which you can keep the recordings. Or if the network is cut and then the network is re-established, it can then kind of resync with the SD card inside. Again, from what I could see currently, there was no confirmation of there being an SD slot on these. But I assume there will be because I don't think Synology have developed these cameras from the ground up themselves. I'm willing to bet just a little bit of the old cachet that these are a third-party brand camera, which they've then um, adapted their own software and services and firmware into the camera, much like they did with the hard drive services. And frankly, I think I would prefer that overall, because although um, they are fantastic in the world of NAS, this, I believe there's no denying that, when it comes to integrating things like hard drives or SSDs or IP cameras or hardware services outside of their own systems, I think I would like to see a camera brand that's been in the business for decades, not one or two whatever years. I want specific camera brands there. So I don't mind uh, a Synology label where you peel it off and it turns out to be like an Axis or something. Um, on top of that, uh, there is a question of encrypted transmissions. Of course, these cameras are going to be utilizing encrypted transmissions built in between the cameras and the surveillance platform there. Again, uh, when it comes to weatherproofing, uh, again, these are uh, indoor-outdoor cameras. They're rated at IP67. So again, that's heavy water dousing, dust proof, very protected. I'm glad to see them IP67. If you've been following this channel for a while, you'll know that I've reviewed quite a lot of IP cameras alongside NAS devices. And generally, if it ain't IP66 or 67, it never leaves the house, okay? So IP67 on these is a great little standard in terms of protection on the camera. Quite common these days in outdoor cameras, but it is considered the minimum for industrial cameras at IP67 ultimately. So that's pretty much everything we know about these cameras at the time of recording. Maybe a little bit more is gonna be added in a follow-up video or in that article in the description if we update it. But let's talk a little bit more about why this is a big deal. Now. Without tooting our own horn here at NAS Compares, we already talked about this in our video in Synology 2022 hardware predictions because not only did we kind of hope, because we talked for years about Synology producing their own cameras because their software is pretty darn good, but on top of that, we would heard kind of bits knocking around in the background at certain Taiwanese and Chinese uh, manufacturers of this being a thing. We just never knew a model ID. So... Myself and Eddie kind of saw this coming, but frankly, we always saw this coming from one of the NAS brands. It seems just an absolute no-brainer. The reason it's a no-brainer and the, one, the reason this is a big deal is because when you buy NASs, any of the NASs really, most of the top tier NAS brands and indeed even the consumer ones arrive with that surveillance software, the ability to add cameras around your home or business environment. And with that, it allows you to have a genuinely a premium feeling uh, camera feed. You can create multiple streams, alerts, and basically integrate those cameras into your storage environment. And it's really, really important because normally when you buy cameras to protect your home or business, the data's got to go somewhere. And you either have to rely on SD cards inside, which if someone nicks the camera, forget that, or you're gonna to have to rely on cloud services, which introduces internet speeds, encryption, and storage safety. And again, if someone nicks the camera immediately, you've got no guarantees that that footage is gonna make it to the cloud. So having that NAS localized along with multi-tiered uh, synchronization across SD cards and cloud results in a much better surveillance uh, experience. Hence why very early doors, NAS brands realized of all the features and services they were including for backups to multimedia and VMs, they knew they had to produce a surveillance platform. However, over the years, no one NAS brand has ever gone out of their way to recommend a camera brand. They just haven't. Occasionally at trade shows, you'll see them showing their wares with certain cameras from different brands, from the top tier Axis to the more domestically and accessible Rio Link but they are very keen to never directly recommend a camera. Now, a lot of that is, um, it's twofold. One, 
because they are a company. They're a, you know, they're a world recognized brand and it's very hard for them to go, yes, we recommend that company, one, without any kind of remuneration for that branding, but two, because they don't know the product and the brand intimately. So it's very hard for them to make a broad recommendation without some sort of cooperation between them. The second thing is when it comes to um, cameras with a NAS, although we are talking about two cameras today, there are literally thousands of supported cameras with hundreds and hundreds being released every year if not in the thousands that are supported by things like RSTP and OMVIV. So the result is it's an incredibly broad subject for them to recommend and also a precarious one in the sense of a global company. So for a long time myself and Eddie and others in the NAS industry have always wondered one will they ever go out of their way and recommend a brand directly and publicly or will they produce their own cameras? And finally, they have. So that's why it's kind of a big deal because a lot of users, when they buy NAS for the first time, when they do want to upgrade surveillance, they will just go recommended uh, camera for my NAS or recommended Synology camera. And there's no straightforward answer. You get lots of guides, including ours, that have got cameras we've tested, but Synology or any of the brands won't really go out of their way and go, that one. Even if you use the filter on their compatibility listings, it's very hard to narrow it down to less than about 50 by even the most meticulous search there. So that's why I'm pretty excited about these cameras. However, at the time of recording, and maybe some of these things will be updated in the link below, there are still question marks about um, Synology having their own cameras, things that we have to sensibly look at. Number one, camera licenses. We've talked about it before and some people consider it dirty words, but when you buy a NAS, they arrive with a certain number of licenses. Now, what I mean by that, and up here we've got the DS920 there, when you get the device, you get two camera licenses. That means with the default setup, with all inclusive, you can add two cameras, which is great. You can add it, one at the front of the house, one at the back of the house. What if you want to add more though? Because that system alone supports between 25 and 40 cameras, depending on the quality. Well, Synology asks you to pay for additional licenses that can range between 30 and 50 pounds, depending on bulk purchase price of individual licenses to add cameras. Now, there is a back and forth between users and the brand on the justification of this. And a lot of that is to do with if you want this software to develop, if you want this software to get bigger and better and better and better, because it is still a very niche part of the overall Synology uh, solution then they're asking for that kind of funding. If you're a home user, they believe two cameras is enough. If you're a business user that's gonna be using these cameras for insurance, for asset protection, staff protection, any and you know insurance and more, then they ask that if you're gonna use it to that extent, that you've gotta kind of work with them a little bit. Now, however you feel about licenses, good or bad, my big question is, are these cameras going to be part of that? Are they going to be part of the license? So if I buy, uh, uh, the, the DS723 Plus or something, if I buy that when it arrives, if it has two camera licenses and I get two Synology cameras, I, is it going to use those licenses? Or because I've bought into the Synology ecostructure with those cameras, will they be inclusive of the license? There's no confirmation either way, but I'm sort of of a mind that I think it should in of itself be its own inclusive license with the camera and not use those other ones up. And I can use those other ones if I use third party cameras. My next question, um, with the Synology cameras, are Synology gonna take a position not slightly dissimilar to the arguably controversial, for some, a position they took on hard drives in 2022, in the early bit before they made a few changes in DSM 7.1. What I mean by that is, if these cameras have got on board hardware integration that the software can take advantage of, is there going to be things that surveillance station will only allow some users to do with just those cameras? What I mean is, I've got a few cameras here in the studio and one set up just over there that has integrated AI processes with an MPU on board. If Synology is able to allow surveillance station to use hardware AI services using the hardware inside the camera from their own cameras, Will it restrict it to just those Synology cameras, but not let me just access a near identical MPU setup on a third party camera? Is ultimately Synology going to 
uh, incentivize the use of their own cameras within their development software because they could argue that because they're using cameras and tweaking that specific firmware they're creating uh, a software and hardware setup that they can optimize there is an argument for that but are they going to do that arguably to the detriment of third-party camera integration or not because i think there'll be some users that will wonder how synology will uh, not monetize certainly but definitely optimize and recommend their own cameras over third parties in terms of hardware and software and the last thing is to do with those ai services i mentioned it earlier on but once again it's worth sticking a big old tbc there i want to know whether using these cameras will mean that you can use the all of the ai services in surveillance station 9 that are currently locked to about three NASes, the DVA3219, the DVA3221, and the DVA1622. Just those three NASes have a huge range of surveillance services that are AI powered with deep video analysis that are not available on the rest of the portfolio, despite some of them having quite fantastic hardware capabilities. For example, the DVA1622 is near identical in hardware to the likes of the DS220 Plus or the 720 Plus to a degree as well. So if they're near enough identical, why does that one have AI services and that one doesn't? It's an odd balance, right? So those are the main unanswered questions. And I'm sure more information on the specifications is going to arrive. Is it PoE or PoE Plus? Uh, what is the lens and the CMOS being utilized in those cameras? The night vision, is it going to be a standard 10 meter? And of course, things like PIR support, all of things questions should be answered very very soon but otherwise if you want to learn more there is an article in the description that is going to be updated as me and eddie find out more information tell me let me know what you guys think because i'm genuinely intrigued by this and i've been waiting a long time for a nas brand to get on having their own cameras but how this ends up um rolling out over time we won't know until h1 of 2023 but thank you so much for watching click like if you enjoyed it subscribe if you want to learn more of course use the free advice section over on nas compares if you want help with your setup or use the free community support forum ask nas compares and finally again we have covered cameras a lot on this channel in conjunction with nas so i'm going to put a link to some of our articles in the description where we've got some recommended ip cameras so you can really get a handle on the subject that should hopefully be below but apart from that i will see you next time